Hi everyone, I'm Liz and welcome back to Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch for Floss Tube episode 100. everyone welcome back to another Sunday floss tube episode I'm Liz and I'm here to share with you everything that I've been working on this week and boy what a week it has been I know I told you guys I was gonna do a live this Sunday to celebrate 100 episodes but it did not pan out um this has been a wild week in Texas and I feel like I say that now once a year I think once a year Austin Texas central texas whatever is just gonna get like a crazy weather event that just shuts down the city for a week um which is not something we're used to but it has happened now in 2021 2022 and now 2023 and this year it was an ice storm which is not really something we've had before the past two years it was mostly snow and a little bit of ice this time it was just like non-stop precipitation um a lot of rain like freezing rain and everything was just coated in inches of ice and we don't have the city infrastructure to deal with that. We don't have trucks that come by and clear the roads or salt the roads or I don't even know what they do to the roads, but we don't have that here. So we just get stuck in our houses and the power grid fails and people's pipes freeze. Uh, so it's been like a bit of a mess. Uh, I got very lucky. I only lost my power for about three hours one morning. Um, so not even long enough for our house to get super cold or anything like that. Um, and then we had, we didn't have Wi-Fi for like 24 hours, um, one day, which, you know, was not fun, but like, <laughs> I still own a DVD player and DVDs of my favorite TV shows from the early 2000s. So <laughs> we were fine. We watched the Office episodes on DVD and, <laughs> and we had electricity, so we were totally fine. Um, but unfortunately my parents lost their, uh, electricity for like 24 hours. My sister Sarah lost hers for like 48 or 72 hours she didn't have her electricity for a long time so she was camped out at my sister's house and my parents house and um yeah so anyways basically all that to say I didn't want to interrupt anyone's weekend because now it's back in the 50s and 60s and sunny and beautiful um to come help me with this live everybody needs a break <laughs> and um it'll also just be easier for me if I just film this and edit this in my normal style because you know there's a lot of prep work to do a live and so that's why it did not happen. But I'm still gonna make this episode spectacular and amazing because I have all kinds of fun stuff to share with you, um, including a lot of giveaways. And I'll talk about this in the giveaway section, but YouTube has had so many giveaway scammers lately. It's not just on Flosstube, it's on every single YouTube channel across the board that does giveaways or is even just a big YouTube channel. Um, and they're just scammers trying to get your money. So I'll talk more about that in the giveaway section so you know if it's me, if you've, you know, like how you know, how you'll know it's me and how you'll know that you've won a prize because, oh my gosh, I feel so bad. Um, hopefully nobody was ever tricked by those scammers. Olivia Pumpkin Hollow Quilt went through it in her video yesterday. Um, I don't know of anyone who actually messaged them, so I don't think they're doing a good job, but it's so frustrating to have to deal with. So anyways, um, let's see what else that I want to share with you guys before we get started. Oh, I know. Okay, so my mother-in-law, Kathy, um, I we went and visited uh, Rob's family in the end of, no, early December, or end of November, early December. I can't remember the exact dates. But um, prior to that, Kathy had started stitching on some like little Mill Hill kits. And then I went to visit her and we went to House of Stitches in LaPorte, Indiana, and she got a bunch of new projects and she has been stitching you guys and loving it. And I am so excited to have converted another person <laughs> to the cross stitch life because she is fully obsessed now. And I wanted to share a picture of her latest, um, FFO where she did a bunch of the kind of worldly... Christmas Santas like they're from different countries by Mill Hill and she put them in this photo collage frame because they're on perforated paper so you can kind of frame them in a matted frame just like a normal artwork right you don't have to stretch it it's paper and so she did this really cool lineup of all of her um, Mill Hill Santas and I think it looks so good so I wanted to share it with you guys because I'm really excited welcome Kathy to the cross stitch life uh <laughs> 
Um, also, I think this version of Pajama Liz is subtle, but this is this is totally um, a pajama top, just a fancy pajama top uh, from Old Navy. I bought this like, I love a match set of pajamas. You guys know this. I wear them <laughs> regularly on my channel. Um, and I was kind of obsessed with finding a Valentine's themed shirt, you know, like or sweater or something fun um, to wear for this episode. And I never really found anything I liked, but I did find these very fancy um, matching pajamas from Old Navy. And so I was like, I'm gonna wear that as a shirt. It has a collar on it, you know. Now that I've pointed it out, you can totally tell it looks like pajamas, right? But um, yeah, I think it's super cute and super comfy. It's just like a loose button down. So I think that's it. I've got a lot of fun stuff. Oh, well, okay, it's a lot of fun stuff, but it's less stuff than normal because I knew this was gonna happen. Whipgo is taking over my life. Um, so the majority of what I've been stitching in the past two weeks has been one of my Whipgo goals for February. Uh, so I really only have a few stitching projects to show you. A couple quilting, um, kind of like all my usual stuff, but I also wanted to do some fun things for the 100th episode, including the giveaways that I mentioned earlier. And then I want to walk you through my under the bed box, which is not an under the bed box. It's just a storage box where I keep all of my cross stitch that is finished, but not yet fully finished because it's kind of piling up. And so I thought it might be fun to look through that and see what I have that needs to be fully finished. Um, so one, I can just look at it again and kind of come up with a plan and prioritization for like what I want to finish when, because there's a lot of good stuff in here that I know I want to get framed. And I just haven't had luck lately with framing. I don't know if I've talked about that. I'll talk about it when I get to that section about the struggles I'm having lately. Um, <laughs> and then the other thing I wanted to do that I've seen other YouTubers do that I thought might be kind of fun. I've never attempted this, so we'll see how it all works out in editing. But I want to revisit my first floss tube episode with you guys. Um, and specifically the get to know a floss tuber um, kind of Q&A that I did to kick off my first episode. I have not watched that episode in probably two years. I know I've watched it since I posted it, but it's probably been two years since I've gone back and watched it. And um, I know it'll be hilarious and painful. I don't know. I just think it'd be fun. So I'm going to try it out. If it doesn't work at all, then you won't see that segment, but I'm just going to put it out there. That's what I'm going to try and do at some point in this episode. So yeah. Okay. Lots of fun stuff. Let's get into it with some fully finished objects because I have two of them. The first one I have to share is my Valentine's pillow. It's all done. I showed you guys last episode that I had the pillow top quilted and all ready to be finished into a pillow. And then I finished it into a pillow and I put up a video all about how I make my quilted pillows and include a little uh, zipper on the back. So with a little like hidden zipper closure. So super happy with how this turned out. And this is going to be part of the giveaway for this week. So to celebrate 100 episodes of Floss Tube, this is going to be kind of the big, the big prize. Well, I'm saying big. I don't know. Maybe other people will want the charts more than the pillow. But <laughs> yes, this will totally be included in the giveaways later. Um, this was a free pattern from Sherry McConnell, A Quilting Life. I'll have the... Um, pattern uh, linked below. And then I will link my video where I showed you how I finished this into a pillow with binding as the piping and a hidden zipper and all that jazz. So yeah, that is my first FFO for this week. Okay, the next thing I fully finished this week was this. <laughs> This is a little Lizzie Kate Valentine's freebie that I will link below. And I turned this into a, just a little decorative pillow to sit in my pillow bowl for Valentine's Day. And I absolutely love how this turned out. So, so cute. Look at that backing, fussy cut backing. <laughs> um, and bonus, I, um, I did a little finishing video of this. So roll that tape. <laughs> Okay, we're about to have a finishing party. <laughs> I am going to turn this little Lizzie Kate freebie um, that I stitched into a little pillow for my pillow bowl. Um, so I have gathered a stack of fabrics. These are, some of these are left over from my pillow project um, last week and some other ones I haven't used before. And then I also grabbed my stash of red and pink fat quarters. And you may notice I don't have a ton of 
red fat quarters and that's because I go through them. I use red a lot. So like I have fewest in my stash um, <laughs> that haven't been used, but I've got plenty of fun pinks. I've got a lot of fun reds, including some whites. I grabbed my trims that I think might work. Um, I've got my interfacing. So now I just need to make some decisions about how I am gonna make this little pillow. I also have this fabric that is literally little postage stamps. Um, and there's like a little envelope on here. And so I think I wanna do this as the backing of the pillow, cause then I can get, you know, several of the stamps all like fussy cut so that it looks cute on the back with the little stamps. I think it's a little bit too busy to go on the front, like underneath, um, underneath the design. I think that's a little too busy, but I think I'm gonna use this for the backing. And then I do really like this hot pink and red. This is a Ruby Star Basic. I think it's called Spark. That's super cute with some sort of, I kind of want to do like a rickrack detail. Ooh, let me find the end of this. Like maybe where I sew it together on the front, something. Um, I also have a tiny rickrack, which is adorable. Ooh, yeah, okay, for sure I'm doing the tiny Rick Rack. That's perfect. So now I just need to decide if I wanna do this hot pink or if I just wanna do this red and white heart that I keep using on everything. <laughs> um, ooh, that's so cute like that. This might be the winner, even though I do love the pink. Yeah, nope, I'm gonna go with the white. Um, and I keep wanting to use this fabric. It's actually a Christmas fabric. It's called Oh What Fun um, by Paintbrush, Paintbrush Design Studio, something like that, Paintbrush Fabrics. But um, I don't think it's quite the right color scheme for this. It's cute though, but I think I'm just gonna do the regular red and white hearts. Uh, and I'm gonna do this tiny rick rack. I had also gotten lace out, but no, that red rick rack is gonna be cuter. And I don't think I'm going to trim the pillow since I'm gonna do rickrack across the front. I think I might let, leave the edges plain, but I do also have this pretty red chenille that I could do, but mm, we'll see when we get there. So let me decide on size and get my pieces cut out um, and then we'll add some interfacing. Um, actually, I'm going to put on some interfacing before I cut this out. The interfacing will keep it really nice and it you know, won't let the linen shift around as I cut. So let me interface this first and then I'll get it cut out. Okay, yeah. So um, I'm just going to take this over to the ironing board and put my interfacing on and then I'll be right back. Okay, interfacing attached. And I think what I'm going to do is leave an inch on all sides. Okay, so here's my little stitch piece. And so I'm gonna cut out a piece of my red and white hearts. Okay, and so with the brick rack, I need to decide how close I want to sew this piece to this white line. Um, and how I want to do my Rick Rack. If I want to top stitch it on afterwards. Yeah, let's do a top stitch. Okay, so I actually, if I leave a quarter. Okay, so I want to trim this to a half inch and that gives me a quarter inch seam allowance and then I'll have a quarter inch below this white line of the linen still showing. So I just use the half inch mark. There it is. Actually, before I sew these together, um, since I put interfacing on the stitching, I'm gonna go ahead and interface the uh, quilting fabric too, just so they feel kind of like the same weight. So they're like the same thickness and they'll be nice and smooth on the front of the pillow. So let me interface the back of the pillow real quick or um, the back of this piece of fabric. 
I am going to take these to the sewing machine, right sides together, and I am just gonna sew a quarter inch right there and I'll come back and I will figure out what size, like what I want the finished size of my pillow to be so we can cut the backing and put it all together with some rickrack. So yeah, let me sew these together. Okay, I got these two pieces sewn together and I went ahead and pressed everything to the fabric side. So that's what it looks like. And now I wanna figure out if I wanna make like a square pillow so it's equal here and here or, hmm, let me see how tall this is. Okay, I'm leaving two and a quarter on the bottom. I'm gonna leave two and a quarter on the top. Okay, perfect. So I have this little four and a half inch square um, that will be my pillow front, and I'm gonna cut a four and a half inch square with the backing. I was gonna use this for a project bag, but I really wanna cut into it. Yes, I will. <laughs> Oh, there's a little sewing machine. Oh, there's a bunch of them. Okay, I'm definitely making sure I get that in the back of the pillow. Yay, how cute is that? That'll be so cute on the back of the pillow. Okay, cool. So let's go to the sewing machine and put this together. Okay, so we have our little pillow front. We have the back of our pillow, and before we sew them together, I want to attach my rickrack. And I am gonna attach the rickrack right over where I joined my fabric, so just right over that seam. And so I wanna sew this rickrack on with um, some red thread so it'll blend a little better, so let me switch out my thread. Okay, I'm gonna use a little stitch length um, because I want my stitches to go right down the center. And if I get off, I wanna be able to like pivot and stay within the rickrack without like, I don't know, kind of being messy and going off into the fabric. So I'm gonna use uh, my 1.8 stitch length that I like to use when I'm quilt piecing. And I'm gonna try and sew just right down the center of the rickrack and right on top of this seam. So I'm kind of lining up the center of my rickrack right on top of this white fabric so that when it's sewed down right here, the rickrack kind of goes into the linen and onto the fabric side. So of course this would be easier to accomplish with the larger rickrack. Um, let me grab it, I'll show you. So like obviously with larger rickrack, it would be easier to sew down, but I think the little stuff looks really dainty and cute. So I'm gonna use it. my center. I don't know if you can see that right here. I got a little off the fabric so I'm actually going to pick that and move this in um, further onto this white fabric because I like the way it looks over here rather than right here. Um, I think I might have sewed it in the exact same spot so I guess I'm calling it good. <laughs> Looks good. Okay, so now what we want to do is layer our pieces right sides together. And I am going to leave an opening for my pillow um, to stuff it on the bottom. Uh, making sure these are both right side up. Yes. Actually, I'm going to use a little clip before, before I start sewing. that I have one of these point turners um, and I'm gonna use it while I'm making this pillow. So let me open that up. Okay, so I need to turn this inside out. Um, I'm gonna trim a little bit of the fabric at the corners here. 
I'm not going too close, just taking a little bit of the bulk. Okay, oh my gosh, this is so cute. <laughs> um, I'm gonna use my little point turner here and see if I can work these corners out a little bit better. Yeah, I really like this thing. It's working really well. Normally I just use a crochet hook, but um, I like this little uh, point here. All right, I am gonna take this to the ironing board and press um, the whole pillow, including this opening, because this opening is what I'll hand sew in just a minute um, after I stuff it. So let me press this real quick. Okay, so here is what the little pillow looks like, all nice and pressed, including um, the seam allowance down here where we'll sew it together. And then look how cute the back turned out. I feel like I got these nice and centered, couple of sewing machines. I mean, the cat and the beret. <laughs> Um, so cute. So let me get this stuffed and closed and we'll have a finished pillow. Okay, I got the bottom sewn closed. I'm gonna get the little loose fuzz and threads and I'm gonna get this a press and then we're done. Okay, that was the pillow. And it turned out so, so cute. I'm so happy, I'm, I just love it. I think it's so sweet and little and I am very excited to have this on display this year. So um, if you want a more in-depth uh, pillow making tutorial, I have done that before. This, you know, that one was just like a little sped up version, but I will link, <clears throat> excuse me, I will link in the description box below a more detailed um, pillow tutorial for, you know, closing up the bottom, adding trim, etc. Just kind of doing all the steps in a little bit more detail. But um, let's see, did I mention that I stitched mine on a 36 count Weeks Dye Works beige and I just pulled um, floss colors out of my stash. I didn't, I don't think I used any of the called for. Um, yeah, so that is my second FFO. Okay, next up I have a finish. And um, basically after I finished all of my Whip Go goals uh, in January, I had just like five days between the end of January and the start of February when we were gonna get our new Whip Go goals. And so I decided to try to squeeze in a start and finish and I did it. <laughs> and that was on my March wordplay. So this is With Thy Needle and Thread, Brenda Gervais, um, March Wordplay. And so as you can see back here, I do all of my wordplays finish the same way to mount on this little tin. I've showed that in 20, 30 videos <laughs> at this point. Um, and I only have four, four or five fully finished. And so I was like, let's work on the next one. So February's on there. The next one that needs to be done is March. And I got it done. So this was a start and a finish since the last time I saw you. And I stitch all of my word plays on 36 count picture this plus. I use various colors but I always use 36 count picture this plus so that they all come out to like the exact same size so I can finish them the exact same size. So they're just super interchangeable on that 10. Um, and so this is a 36 count Wren from picture this plus which I think I've used on another one before I can't remember. And I did use all of the called for colors. To be honest, I was a little unsure of the color palette when I got started, but I think this looks so pretty. Because the pictures, sometimes I feel like the pictures are a little dark or make it look slightly more prim than it is. I mean, it's definitely prim, but um, I was really happy once I got stitching with the kind of colorfulness of March. So, you know, March is kind of like the end of winter and like, at least here, it's not super colorful. I mean, stuff blooms here earlier than it does in other places, I'm sure, because it gets hotter, but March is not, March and April are not my favorite months, to be honest, because they're so rainy and gray here, usually. Um, I mean, we have some nice sunny days. It's not like it rains all the time here, but it rains more than anyone wants, I think. <laughs> but anyways, I'm super happy to have March done, and I think I will try to find some sort of light to medium green um, to use as the fabric kind of behind 
can't even reach behind my piece like I do. I Should I get that down? Let me just get it down. Yeah, so you can see I always mount um, my stitching on a piece of fabric on a backer board. Um, and then I use a washer and I have a magnet glued onto the box so that it can be centered. <laughs> can I do it one-handed and backwards? Um, so that's how I finish them. And I just need to pick a fun fabric to go behind this one and finish it. And I'll have this one ready to go for March. So super excited to have this one done. Okay, the next one was also a new start, but now it's also an abandon. <laughs> so it's not on my whip list, but I'm still going to show you because I did work on it these past two weeks. Um, I left the chart on the other side of the room and I don't want to get up and walk over to it because I've got so much stuff around me. So I'll put a picture up. It is the Heart and Hand Collector's Heart 2023. And I think I told you guys in my last video, I'm going to start this right now. I did. I went and started it <laughs> right then. I didn't love it. <laughs> uh, not, I love the chart. It's getting stitched. I'm going to I'm going to restart it. But I didn't love the fabric floss combo. Um, on 32 count, which is what the chart came with, um, I wanted to try to stitch one strand and I used the called for floss, uh, that the leather bound from Cottage Garden Threads, which is beautiful, uh, on this fabric and I didn't like the way it looked. And I was like, maybe it'll look better in two strands. I don't know, but I think I want a brighter red. So then I picked a brighter red and I tried two strands on this 32 count and I didn't like that either. <laughs> So this one's getting restarted um, and I'm going to unpick the fl the floss that I have stitched on here and save this fabric for like an ornament or something because I'll use it. I just, this combination, I was like, this isn't making me happy. I'm going to restitch mine on a 36 count using a brighter red, but one strand. Um, so here is what I started and you can tell right in here, these letters are stitched with the called for floss color with one strand and then this star and this border are stitched with the, um, I think I subbed to Ribbon Red from Classic Color Works, and it's stitched with two strands, and I don't like how chunky it is. Um, so yeah, <laughs> this is being abandoned, but I'm just going to pick all this out and save this for an ornament project because this will be perfect. Um, there's a lot of times that I want to stitch ornaments, but stitching them on 36 or 40 would make them too small. And so I want, so I'll use like 32 count. Um, so this will definitely um, get used. And I'm definitely going to restart, hopefully immediately, that collector's heart on a 36 count because I love, 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 love that design. Um, I just didn't love what I was trying to do on this 32. So I'm going back to my tried and true 36 and calling it a day because I'm done trying things. <laughs> um, but yes, this was a new start that I had and um, I'm excited to restart it on fabric that I um, more enjoy stitching on, I guess is the only way to say that. Um, I'm sorry, 32 count. You're just not for me. Um, okay, so that was that one. Oh, did I say this is a 32 count Oaken by Picture This Plus? It came with the kit. Um, so if you buy the Heart and Hand Collectors uh, 2023, it comes with everything in there. And so if you love stitching on 32, go for it because um, it comes with the fabric you need, which is awesome. I love when everything comes together because it just makes it easier. <laughs> uh, okay, next. I started my first Whip Go Goal of 20, no, of February 2023. Anyways, um, and that was Janet Haig Pratt from Heartstring Samplery. I set myself a goal to finish this one. And I don't think I pulled this one out and looked at it before I assigned that goal because uh, I'll put a picture up. <laughs> this is how far I was when I put this one away last year. And I was like, oh man, I thought I was closer. Why did I assign this one to finish? I think because it's a smaller sampler. It's like 110 by 110. Um... So I am making progress, but both of my Whip Go goals for February are pretty big. So um, it's not going to leave me a lot of time to do more Valentine stitching, which I am a little sad about, but that's okay. I'm making progress. So here, let me put this down, is my Janet Haig Pratt. And so you can see I've made it about halfway because I'm all the way down to the bottom. Um, the chart is split into four pages, but two of them are just like an inch of the right side. So um, after I finished the top two pages, uh, I was like, let me drop down and do the right side all the way down to the bottom. 
So that's where I'm at with that. Uh, I bought this as a kit from Beth Twist's Etsy, uh, Etsy shop, her Heartstring Samplery Etsy. And she had this kitted with Weeks Dye Works 36 Count Gray and um, DMC. And it even came with like a floss ring and floss cards. And it came with everything and it was amazing. So yeah, just four colors of DMC. Super easy, super cute. Um, I just kind of wish I hadn't assigned this a finish because it's still gonna take me like five or six days to finish and I have so many other things I wanna stitch on. But um, that's the point of WhipGo to kind of keep you focused on what your goals are and I am appreciative of it and I'm gonna stick to it. But um, just know I'm dreaming of Valentine stitching. <laughs> so that is that one and hopefully in my next episode you will see a finish on this one and I will have moved on to my next whip go goal and so I have it that was my last whip that's the only I only stitched on three things in the last two weeks um I got a finish on my wordplay worked on my whip go goal and I finished or I started and abandoned <laughs> that new valentine's project um but I thought I would show you my next whip go goal for the month, which I have not started on, but I'm hoping um, by the next time I film a video, which, when is that? What is today, the 5th? Around the 19th or 20th, I think, is when my next video will be. Um, and by then, I better have started on this because this goal is for 10 days in February, and February is only 28 days, so um, yeah. So my second whip go goal is to work for 10 days on this Hands Across the Sea sampler called Where Flowers Bloom. And I am hoping that 10 days gets me close to a finish. I don't know that I'll, I think I originally, I set a goal to finish this and then was like, slow your roll, like rein yourself in because I was setting crazy goals on my whip go board. Um, so I switched this one to just 10 days of stitching because I'm not that far on it. Um, it's not huge, but there's a lot of color changes. So this one does take a while to stitch. So I'll just show you real quick um, where I'm at with it, like where my starting point is at. Oh, I think I'm a little bit farther than I thought. Cool. I didn't iron this one. Sorry. Um, yeah, so here's where I'm at with where flowers bloom. So I have gotten all the way to the bottom on that side. So you can see it's not a huge sampler. Um, so yeah, maybe 10 days I can actually get it across the finish line. We will find out. So that is all my stitching this week. Okay, so before I move on to sewing, um, of course I have some Starstruck 2 quilt updates to share with you, but first I want to take a look back at episode number one of Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch. <laughs> and so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to watch it here on my iPad, but I'll put it up on the screen for you, and also you'll still be able to see my face. Um, and let's just revisit 2020 Liz together. <laughs> I think I was blonde. I'm pretty sure I was very blonde. I kept my hair blonde for like five or six years. Um, and then I decided to go darker before I got married and I do like it, but the blonde covers the gray so much better that like I might slowly phase back into a blonde um, by next summer, <laughs> just FYI. Uh, let me pull up the video and let's see if I can make this work. Oh, do you guys wanna know my most popular episode of Floss Tube ever? Not my most popular video because I have um, tutorials and things that are more popular than my normal Floss Tube episodes, but my most watched episode of Floss Tube ever is actually episode number 87, which wasn't that long ago. I think it was six months ago. Um, very random. I just wanted to look that up. So if anybody hasn't seen Floss Tube episode 87, that's my most popular Floss Tube episode. Uh, <laughs> okay, let me find Floss Tube number one. Here it is. Ooh, okay. Let's pull this up. Hi guys. Okay. Um, what am I even to. looking at? Why am I looking over the top of my camera? Uh, my name is Elizabeth. Sorry. And, <laughs> I'm gonna get embarrassed um, so quick. Um, I was filming on my iPhone. So, uh, um, so where am I looking? Because video, I'm filming on my iPhone now and clearly I know how to look at it. So. Um, what am I? Okay, so that's fine. Let's let it go. Those questions. Um, the first thing is, where do you live? So I live I'm in so Cedar Park, Texas, which is a suburb of Austin, um, just right outside the Austin city limits. Uh, what uh, so this know your needleworker tag, uh, I found this on somebody's blog because somebody I watched on Flosstube had mentioned 
you know, the tag and answered the questions. I can't remember now who it was, but um, to me, this just felt like the easiest way to kickstart my floss tube was to have like a series of questions to introduce myself. So um, I'm also interested to revisit what my answers were and see if any of them have changed since then. <laughs> What do I do for a living? So I am um, a project manager, a financial project manager for a large corporation. Yeah, I'm still saying, um, I still have the same so job. A lot of talking and planning and writing and accounting. <laughs> That's what I do all day. And um, we've been working from home since the whole COVID-19 mm, stuff. RIP so working from home. I've definitely been getting more stitching done. Um, I've still been working, but there's no commute and Sometimes maybe I can stitch during a meeting. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I definitely um, would. <laughs> do you have any children? So no, I do not. Um, I live um, in my house here with my boyfriend um, and we have three cats. And kids. <laughs> oh, and we do still have three cats, but they are not the same three cats. Um, Diego is still here. Uh, Rob's cat, but um, Ginger and Birdie, my um, elderly orange cats, you guys know, passed away over the last couple of years and they... Um, now we have Jonesy and Honey, who are wild, wild and crazy kittens. Anyways. <laughs> um, what are your other hobbies besides stitching? So I have a lot of them. I'm sitting right now in my craft room, uh, my sewing room. I really mostly quilt and cross stitch. Mm -hmm. Those are the two biggest, but I also knit, crochet, paint, um, sew project bags, uh, I don't know, kind of anything. I've gotten really into framing my own yeah. cross-stitch stuff lately, um, so that's been fun. Um, other than that, I uh, love a good movie on the couch, um, uh, swimming and hanging out and grilling with my family. Uh, I don't know, I have all kinds of hobbies. Reading. Okay, I do have all kinds of hobbies, but I'm laughing because I'm like, when is the last time I knitted, knit or crocheted anything? Um, it's been a while. And painting, now I only do it if I'm FFOing something. Um, I mean, painting was never like a main hobby, but I've done like oil painting uh, classes at a local uh, like uh, art studio in Austin. Um, it's kind of funny, but I definitely quilting and cross stitch took over my life. So <laughs> um, pretty much anything. Stitching's number one though. <laughs> uh, what is your favorite movie? So my favorite movie is Clueless. Yeah the throwback from the Accurate. 90s that is the movie I've seen the most times the movie I can quote the most um yeah that was my, that's my favorite movie uh your favorite tv show so probably favorite overall is the yeah. office I was gonna say I better um, say the office here but, oh man I have a lot of different <laughs> favorite tv shows depending on the day um I super love Veep mm. if anybody Veep. um knows that show uh Oh my god, on HBO. It's so funny. Um, I also love Breaking Bad and some other dramas, but um, probably overall The Office. Yeah. Um, my favorite music, uh, probably definitely kind of like pop, hip hop, mm -hmm. yep. current music, but um, I also just really love like the music I, you know, went to high school with. So all kinds of, you know, 90s, 2000s hip hop and R&B and pop. And I love the divas like Mariah Carey and uh, Whitney Houston. <laughs> Okay, speaking of the divas, uh, the other night in the kitchen, uh, Rob was reminding me of something. Like, I asked him something. He's like, remember I told you about this? And so, because uh, I'm a weirdo, I said, much like Celine, it's all coming back to me now. Um, and he was like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and I'm like, you don't know that Celine Dion song? And he's like, no, I don't, I don't know Celine Dion. <laughs> Anyways, that's how much I love the divas, <laughs> but I'll just throw out a Celine Dion reference and hope he understands what I'm talking about. He did not. He never knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> Our references are very different. <laughs> and Shania Twain, you know, like anybody who would have been on Divas Live on VH1. <laughs> it's kind of my favorite. Um, what one word best describes you? Uh, I should have looked at these before I started answering them. Um... <laughs> Was not prepared. I'm gonna say friendly. You know, I'm very like talkative and um, outgoing and yeah. easygoing and yeah. So I'm gonna say friendly. Okay, so I also wanted to talk about the floss tubes that I watched that kind of got me thinking about getting on here and sharing with you guys. See if um, I still watch all I'm these floss tubes. On. So uh, I think stitching with the housewives maybe three years ago. That's the first one that I started watching yep. that kind of got me into floss tube. I think I was searching for how to do something. Yeah, I probably say this in a second, but literally I came across a Stitching with the Housewives video um, 
because I searched YouTube on how to do something and I was like, hold up, people just sit on YouTube and talk about cross stitch? How did I not know this existed? And it like blew my mind. <laughs> um cross stitch wise or I, I don't I think I was googling for something and I came across one of their videos and got super hooked and um then I started seeing other floss tubes and the ones I watch really regularly right now are um the housewives Brenda and the serial starter uh Nicole's mm -hmm. eel work I pretty much mm -hmm. always just want to stitch whatever Nicole's stitching yeah um, still the I've <laughs> really been liking Barbara's daughter who's a newer floss tuber that I just started watching oh, Kim um, and then Kim come back <laughs> I really miss her channel. Did y'all ever watch Barbara's Daughter? Um, she made videos for about a year and I think about a year and a half ago she went back to school like she was I think getting her PhD uh, or master's I cannot remember but Kim whenever you're done with school come back and make videos. Brenda from Handwork Maniac um, and oh, Misty yeah. Purcell those are kind of the main ones but I yes. watch. Yes sure oh my gosh. Others, so. Yeah okay yeah, so that is still a great group of floss tubers. Um, those were kind of like the OG, uh, you know, original floss tubes I watched. Okay, I think <laughs> that's where I'm going to leave this little reaction segment because um, there's 30 more minutes of that video and I don't want this video to be two hours long and half of it is just me watching myself and laughing. Um, but feel free to go back and revisit episode one if you want. That was really fun. <laughs> I'll take out my AirPods. Um, <laughs> okay. Hopefully that was fun for you guys too. I don't know. We'll see how it works when I edit it all together. <laughs> my key takeaways are that I did not know where to look. I didn't know how to look at my notes and look at the camera. I don't think I wanted to look at the camera. I was very unsure of myself and trying to be much more like quiet and I think subdued than I normally am. Uh, I was just really nervous. I remember that day. So I had been telling Rob like for a couple of weeks, like, I think I'm gonna make a YouTube video about cross stitch. And I was telling him all about floss tube and he's like, okay. Cause I, I mean, I think maybe he had known what it was cause I would watch it like on TV while I stitched and stuff. But uh, I think he was like, you're gonna make a, a video and publish it? And I was like, I think so. And so finally one Sunday I got up, you know, I did my hair, I put on some makeup and I just kept pacing around the house. And I was like, okay, I was like, I'm gonna go into my craft room, shut the door, don't talk to me. <laughs> just gonna film and I did and I published it and I remember um the next day it was a Monday it was a work day but of course we're all working from home still then and my sister and I had a ritual a couple times a week on um an afternoon when we didn't have a lot of meetings to go grab a Starbucks around the corner and so I remember Monday uh I watched my subscriber count go you know to 10, 20, 30 people. And I was like, I think I might hit 100 people today. And I was like, if I hit 100 people today, we're going to Starbucks this afternoon. And I distinctly remember at four o'clock in the afternoon hitting 100 subscribers on my very, you know, first video on my new channel. And I texted my sister, let's go get a Starbucks. And that's how we celebrated. And I was very, very excited. And um, yeah, I think it just kind of took off from there. So that was my trip down memory lane. Thank you for joining me. Uh, let's move on to quilting for a minute. Okay, so earlier this week, I published my Starstruck 2 Quilt Along kickoff video. Um, and thank you all for everyone who has been joining in and um, commenting on that video and letting me know what kind of fabrics you're using and posting your pictures on Instagram. It has been so fun to see. Thank you guys so much for joining along with me and Liz Matthews. So Liz is my co-host in this little Quilt Along. And um, I guess we posted about it so much that uh, Layla Boutique, who is is the quilt pattern designer she noticed and she reposted us onto her Instagram page which was amazing so if any of you found me through um, Vanessa Gertzen's uh, Instagram page Layla Boutique um, thank you hi welcome I know I got several new followers last week after that happened so welcome to our little quilt along and um, I'll link the video below if you haven't seen it for the kickoff but I am ahead of schedule. So I published this schedule for myself and I posted this on my Instagram page if you're looking um, for a place or you can just screenshot it right here if you want it. Um, this is how I am going to attempt to keep myself on track over the next three and a half weeks that we have left in February. And so my goal for the very first week was to get all of my fabrics cut out and to get all of my snowball blocks made. And I did it. Right here, I have 60 snowball blocks <laughs> and all kinds of fun red fabrics red pink tan they're all so beautiful so i am really excited because that means i have 
today, this afternoon, although to be honest, I'm going to be editing this video most of the most of today. But that means I have Monday and Tuesday completely free where I had still been planned to be working on this. So I'm going to be moving on to my next step, which is to make all of the flying geese and the half square triangles for the star blocks. So in my kickoff video, I showed you guys my process for doing these flying geese and I put together one of my star blocks. Um, so yeah, now I just need to make the other 59. <laughs> But first, I'm going to kind of do it in batches. So instead of just making one of these star blocks at a time, because in order to make the star blocks, you've got to make your flying geese, you've got to make your half square triangles, you've got to do all these things. I'm breaking mine down into steps that I can just do like as chain piece continuous things. So I have my stacks of background squares and flying geese corners. And so I'm just going to sit down at the sewing machine and do all the flying geese at once. And then I'm going to do all of my half square triangles at once, which these get paired up and make two half square triangles. And then um, the third week is going to be all about assembling these quilt blocks. So in my next floss tube video, I should have all of these done. Oh my gosh. We'll see. <laughs> I hope so. That's my goal is to get all of these star blocks made in the next two weeks. So that way the last week is all about putting the quilt together. So I'm very excited about it. Um, and I'm excited about my progress. Liz has also been making excellent progress. She was like, I'm not going to do this on your pace, your schedule. And I was like, that's totally fine. She has a Nashville Needlework Market in March which so do I. I'm going with her. I think I've mentioned it. I'm very excited. Um, but I don't have to prep anything. I just get to show up, help her out, shop, look around, meet tons of designers that I'm very excited to meet. Um, if you're a cross-stitch designer and you're going to be at Needlework Market, you're going to see this face because <laughs> I'm going to come find you. <laughs> I'm really excited to meet everyone and I hope I don't like, I know I won't. I'm cool in person, right? I'm like cool, chill. I'm not going to, well, Teresa Kogut might have a different story because I did get way too excited to see her in person in um, Kansas City and she was like, a little like, okay, hi. <laughs> she was very nice. We talked, we talked later, but I think I was like, Teresa. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to try and be really chill and cool um, and pretend I've been there before, you know, uh, but no on the inside. I'll be fangirling over everyone. Uh, so anyways, <laughs> now that I've revealed myself to be an absolute lunatic, uh, yeah. I'm really looking forward to Needlework Market. What was I talking about? I'm just very excited. I'm in a very good mood right now, which is making me extra chatty and extra loud. And it's okay. It's okay. It's a video about love and fun and red. Red, red. Everything red. <laughs> That's my favorite Pat Sloan um, saying. I don't know. She says it a lot. I love it. Okay, I also wanted to share um, a really cool piece of news, and that is Keystone Sisters Quilting have offered a discount. So anyone who is making this Starstruck 2 quilt and is looking for professional long arming services, Keystone Sisters Quilting has you covered. So I'm going to put up a little graphic on the screen so I don't say the wrong things. Um, but this is the discount they have offered. So if you are interested, reach out to them, email them, let them know um, that you're, you know, doing the Starstruck 2 quilt along and so when you like kind of have your top done and you're ready to be quilted reach out to them and um they actually have a form on their website too to fill out and just make sure you let them know it's a Starstruck 2 quilt as part of the quilt along and you'll get the discount on your quilting services so thank you so much to Keystone Sisters Quilting for providing that okay I think I've reached the end of all the Starstruck 2 stuff I need to say so why don't we go through my under the bed box of finished objects that need to be FFO'd because I want to see what's in here. <laughs> okay, this is my storage box for finishes. It is just a 12 by 12 scrapbook storage case um, that I also keep like quilt projects and stuff in, but it works really well for um, my finishes. So of course the ones on top are going to be the ones you saw from last episode where I finished five things. So I'll just run through them really quickly. This is my Quaker Snowflakes by Hello from Liz Matthews. This is my Valentine's Tiny Town or Big Hearted Tiny Town, I think, from Heart and Hand. Oh, also, I have something on the way. I finally figured out how I wanted to finish my Tiny Towns. So next episode, I will show you because I have something really cool on the way <laughs> I'm very excited about. Um, and a couple of you guys are the ones who DM'd me 
to let me know about it. And thank you. <laughs> um, next I have Winter Garden by Hello from Liz Matthews. And then I have my little Mill Hill octopus that needs to be finished. Um, I actually don't know why he's in here. So this box is actually my bigger pieces. I have uh, ornaments and little like Mill Hill smalls in a bin over here somewhere. Um, they're not, I don't usually store the smalls in here, but whatever, he got tucked in there. <laughs> okay, then we have Labor for Learning by Plum Street Samplers. I finished this last year sometime. Oh, I have my Christmas garden. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I don't have this finished. I think I was going to try and do it by Christmas and then I never got a frame. Oh, my framing struggles. I need to talk about that. Um, here is Christmas garden. Oh gosh, I need to get this one framed. I might take this one to my local framer and have her do it. Because this one's big. I might just, yeah, this one might get taken in. We'll see. Oh, this one is so cute. This is my favorite market release last year. This is the scissor, scissor sampler or sewing sampler. I forgot. Um, I'll put it up on the screen. And this was, why can I not remember? Tell an emblem. I remembered. Tell an emblem. Scissor sampler, I believe. So beautiful. Oh, I need this one framed. And I ordered a frame for it and it didn't work. Um... Then I have, oh, Benny, this was for my, this is for my nephew, Benny. I haven't framed it yet for him. Oh my goodness. Okay, this needs to go high on the priority list. So Benny can have this hanging in his room because his brothers have a little piece of framed cross stitch from me and I wanted Ben to have one too. And my nieces, Sophia and Isla, both have their cross stitch pieces. So I think my sisters are done having kids. I think that's all the baby cross stitch I have to make. <laughs> but it's so cute. And also I need to cut it off this big fat quarter because look how much extra fabric I have here and I don't need this all just sitting in this um, in this bin and it even has a needle in it. Ugh, Liz. <laughs> what fabric is this? 36 count cream and sugar fiber on a whim. Yeah, I should really uh, cut this piece off and use the rest of this fabric. <laughs> oh yeah, okay, this is my hands across the sea Elizabeth Wood, that was her name. So this is actually the first Hands Across the Sea sampler I ever finished. The first one I started was that Where Flowers Bloom, but this is the first one I finished. Loved it. And, oh yeah, okay. This is another ornament that I'm not really sure why they're in here, but that's okay. Um, this is a JBW, I think it was called Peace on Earth. Super cute. It's a little ornament. And then this is the friend stitch ornament from this year. And let's see. Oh yeah, this is my haunted house from Bent Creek. Oh, so cute. I finished stitching this right before Halloween, but I never fully finished it. I still need to. I think I'm just going to frame it, to be honest. I had ideas about the 3D finish that I saw at Stitches, Stitches in Paradise, Paradise. What's the Las Vegas cross stitch store called? Is it Stitches in Paradise? Why am I forgetting? I've been that that's like the cross stitch store I've been to the most because I went to Las Vegas so many times planning my wedding. Um and I kept going to the cross stitch store while I was there. <laughs> so I think that's literally uh the cross stitch store I've been to the most in my life, and it's a thousand miles away. Um, anyways, <laughs> but they had a 3D model like finished of this that's really cool, but I think I might just frame mine. We'll see. And another one where I need to separate it from the fabric because look at all this pretty fabric I have left. Um, oh, a strawberry that I stitched in 2021. <laughs> this was the Quaker strawberry from Erica Michaels. It needs to be finished. Oh my gosh, I think I stitched this one in 2020. This is a Blackbird Designs strawberry from the little Christmas strawberry book. Um, yep. And then, oh yeah, <laughs> I stitched this in the lead up to my wedding. I have not finished it. I think I was gonna add um, our wedding date, like anniversary date on it. I'm not sure, but I definitely am gonna finish this new little pillow. Oh 
my gosh. And this will just become part of my summer stuff because I feel like we got married in June. So the wedding's like commemorative stuff if I don't want to leave it out all year round, which why not? I might just leave it out all year round, but I feel like I'll include it in like my summer, my summer decor. Um, and then I have this little guy, which is a Brenda Gervais, um, Mary and Minty. It was a Christmas sal in 2020 or 2021. I can't remember. And I think I left off, there was like a top border and I just finished it like this. And I think I was just going to make a little pillow. Super cute. And then I have my Christmas Tiny Town from Heart and Hand. And I get to finish these soon because the item I bought off Etsy, I think it's delivered tomorrow. So I'm very excited. So I will get to show you guys that in two weeks, how I plan on finishing my Tiny Towns. Um, okay, that is everything in the box. So it's really, I mean, it's a lot for me. I don't normally leave this many things not fully finished. I like to fully finish um, pretty quickly, I think, because I, I usually enjoy the fully finishing process. Uh, but I don't know why. I just haven't felt like fully finishing lately. I basically, when I come in my craft room, I just want to like sew in quilts. I don't necessarily want to be fully finishing. So I definitely need to get more motivated to fully finish some of these objects. And Michelle and Jen from Penny's Daughter and Two Tall Stitchers are doing the FFO challenge this year to inspire people to start working on their FFOs. And it definitely inspired me because they've been posting so many fun finishes in their Instagram stories, if you haven't been watching. <laughs> and so I got this one out and I'm definitely going to um, post this on Instagram and use their hashtag because they inspired me to get this one fully finished. And I need to continue that inspiration to get everything else fully finished. Um, but yeah, thanks for letting me walk through my little bin here. I need to sit down and prioritize which of these is actually going to get done and what I want to order frames for. Um, okay, speaking of frames, so it's not even like that much drama, but I have several pieces in there, including that scissor sampler that I showed you guys, where I measure them and I keep a note in my phone called like frame sizes or something where I put the cross stitch piece, the exact dimensions of the stitched area, and then the dimensions of the frame, like my ideal frame size. So if a stitched piece measures seven by eight finish, then I usually add about inch or an inch and a half on each side, just to kind of depending on how much space I want around it. And so I like record those dimensions in my phone so that whenever I'm out and about, if I find clearance frames that are pre-built or um, if I think I can fit in a standard frame, I just have a list on my phone. So I know, you know, when I'm out and about shopping, what kind of frame sizes I need. And basically I have this place that I've ordered from before. I, should I even mention the name? Whatever, it's fine. CustomFrameSolutions.com. I've used them before, but I ordered two frames from them, and this was months ago, like September or October or something, and they were supposed to be shipped within two weeks. So first thing, they didn't ship for like a month, and then only one of them shipped to me, and it shipped to me in pieces where I had to assemble the frame myself, meaning I had to line up and get the joints to line up correctly, glue, put the little, like, I don't even know what it's called. Basically, they sent me the frame pieces that I had to assemble. And I went through their website and I was like, where does it tell me that you're gonna send me pieces of a frame that I have to put together? I can't build a frame. This is why I'm ordering a frame. So I got really <laughs> upset and basically got them to refund um, that frame and then cancel my order of the other frame that they hadn't even sent to me yet because I was like, no, I'm not assembling frames. I don't wanna make sure my frame is all, you know, what do you even call it? Like not plum, but like lined up, like the angles are right and that it's sturdy and every, mm -mm. Um, but they like have the best molding selection that I found online. So I, of course there's other places, like there's a ton of places on Etsy, there's a ton of other websites, but they all have just different types of molding available. And basically I need to find a new place to buy frames online because that did not work out. I've ordered that from them before and it's all been fine. They've sent them to me assembled, but apparently in some cases they send them out unassembled and uh, in very small print on one of their FAQ pages, it says that they can do that. And I'm like, mm -mm. <laughs> that's not how I want to receive frames. So anyways, so that's why those two never got framed. And I, even though I had the best intentions of, I think I ordered a frame for Benny's, um, 
uh, cross stitch of the animals and then for the scissor sampler and so neither of those got framed so then the other day well like a few weeks ago Rob and I had a free Saturday and I was like let's go to Michael's I want to look through their frame selection even though I feel like my Michaels like they just never get new frame moldings and I know what they have I was like let me grab a stack of pieces that I want to frame and let's go to Michael's so I packed up like five different cross stitch pieces including Christmas garden and a bunch of stuff and we went to my local Michael's and there was a couple of customers at the framing counter being helped and then there was a very angry irritated gentleman standing hovering over the employee um, demanding attention and so we kind of hung back and basically the guy was losing his mind because he had brought stuff in to be framed in October was told he would have it by Christmas and didn't get it by Christmas then was told first week of January didn't get it I think it was like the third week in January that we were there and he was losing his mind and so I'm standing there being like well one obviously I can't like look through the frames and get help while this guy is like losing his entire mind on the staff of this Michaels um which I get like he you know wanted his piece back it's been months and he just kept getting no update no update and they were like sorry we haven't done it yet uh but also I'm like oh do I want to order a frame here is it going to take forever are they not going to build it like you know what's going on at this Michaels <laughs> so anyways I we retreated I was like I'm not gonna deal with this today uh <laughs> <laughs> so now basically I need to just measure everything precisely and there's a few Etsy shops that I love um the why can't I, I'm not rusted roof and signed by number I can't remember I'll put them I'll put links in the description box below to some of my favorite places on Etsy but I think I need to just get on Etsy get some custom sizes have them shipped to me um and I know those places mail them to you assemble <laughs> <laughs> because I'm not dealing with putting together my own frames again. Um, anyways, frame drama. But I have the best intentions. I want to get a lot of these framed. I just have not had good luck with ordering frames or trying to go shop for frames. So that's the boring story of why nothing is framed right now. Cool. Cool story. Okay. <laughs> um, the only little bit of haul I have to share is my floss club from Fat Quarter Shop. This is the Fine Floss NPI, NPI Club. And these are the colors I got for January. So there's one tiny bit of haul. And then I have one piece of Happy Mail. Uh, let me see, do I have the note with it? Yes, Ariana. Ariana, very kindly. Okay, so she was also part of the Bird Crush Club that Lindy Stitches did. And um, she accidentally got a duplicate package from Stephanie. And Stephanie very kindly told her to just keep it and give it away. And so she asked if she could send it to me to give away on my channel. And so, yes, um, I will definitely be giving this away at some point. Um, but it is the Red Faced Warbler. And it comes with the um, variegated floss and the chart. And uh, she also sent along two copies of the final chart in the series, which is super cute. So these will be included in a future giveaway. Thank you so much, Ariana, for sending these. I know somebody will be super excited to receive them. Oh, and here is the very pretty Threadworks floss that came with that red-faced warbler chart. Okay, so the last thing we have to talk about is giveaways. And um, on my channel, whenever I do a giveaway, the only way you will ever know if you've won is by watching one of my videos. <laughs> so in today's video, I will announce what the giveaways are. You guys will enter below in the comments. And then in my following video, I will pull winners and display your name and say your name out loud um, on my channel. That's the only way I announce giveaway winners, except I guess in the case of last week where I didn't wanna wait till the next video. So I, from my account, posted a screenshot of the winner into the community tab. It will always come from me. Um, the scammers who get in the comments like to create a profile that uses my profile picture and something that looks like my name. Um, I think the last one, it said Elizabeth Ann can stitch at Telegram. No, that's not me. It's just Elizabeth Ann can stitch. Uh, and <laughs> I will never ask you to download Telegram, uh, or any other app. I will just ask you to email me. And, uh, my email address is always elizabethancanstitch at gmail.com. And it's always in the description box. That's how you can reach out. And, um, you will know you won because I will say your name out loud on this channel. And that's the only way. So please do not respond to any, um, random people who comment on your comment who kind of look like they might be me. It's not me. Uh, just report their comment or ignore it. Um, but 
yeah, I'm really sorry. This keeps happening. It's happening to everyone. It's not just my channel. So, and I think as long as people continue to do giveaways on YouTube, which I'm going to continue to do, it might happen because people think there's an opportunity to scam. And I just really hope nobody actually responds to them. Don't respond to them. That's all they want. Um, well, really what they want is your money. Because I think the way the scams works, the scam works, because this is what Olivia was talking about on her channel, and I've heard one other YouTuber mention this as well, is they get you to download this app and message them. And then they tell you, you've won a prize, but you have to pay for shipping. I would never ask you guys to pay for shipping, ever. Um, even when I do, when I open up giveaways to international and stuff, like, no, I would never ask. I, it's a giveaway. It's for free. I'm paying for shipping. Um... And I pay for shipping because I have ads on my channel. Um, I make money from like YouTube putting ads on my channel. So I make that, I use that money to buy craft supplies and equipment for my channel and to pay for giveaways. So I would never, no, I would never ask you guys to pay for shipping. So that's my disclaimer on giveaways. Um, how you enter a giveaway is you're a subscriber, you like the video, and you leave a comment. And in the comment, you use the keyword, and then I run a program that scans all the comments for that keyword and picks a random winner. That's easy peasy, a lemon squeezy. <laughs> so let me show you the giveaways I have for you guys this week. Okay, the first giveaway I have for you this week is my quilted pillow cover. So um, full disclosure, I'm going to send it to you as a flat cover. That way I can fold it and put it in a padded envelope and I don't have to mail a big box. Um, so if you win this, you will need to have or you'll need to get on Amazon and get a 20 by 20 pillow insert to put in this or use one of your existing pillows. But um, yeah, I made this using the Quilting Life pattern. I uh, long arm quilted it myself. I assembled it myself. You saw me do that in my video. And I just really wanted to give away something handmade. I think I've given away a project bag before, but um, it's been two and a half years, 100 episodes, and almost, almost 20,000 subscribers. Which, by the way, I went back through my analytics, and 40% of the people who watch my channel aren't subscribed. So if a few of you want to just click that subscribe button to enter this giveaway, maybe I'll be at <laughs> 20,000 um, by tomorrow. Um, anyways, so this is giveaway number one. So since I have quite a few giveaways, I'm going to do numbers. So this is number one. So you just enter the number one. Um, if you'd like to be entered for this giveaway, you can enter as many of my giveaways as you would like, but you will only win one of them. Like once I pull your name, you won't be entered for the rest of them. So if you would like to enter this, leave a comment with the number one. Okay, and then everything else is a bundle, so I'm not going to show you everything that's in it, but I'll just give you a quick little look at it. I have gotten so many great charts gifted to me from viewers and from different shops, like Fat Corner Shop and Cobweb Corner and stuff over the years, and so I just bundled up together a lot of these fun giveaways into like little themes, so feel free to enter for any of these that you would want to receive. Um, number two, so this is giveaway number two, and it is an It's So Emma bundle, and so that includes charts published by Fat Quarter Shop under the the It's So Emma umbrella. So I've got lots of fun Lori Holt and Fat Quarter Shop designs in this one. So this will be number two. Then number three is a spring bundle with these kind of fun whoop, springy charts. Number four is summer. And so this has some plum streets, some blackbird designs, all kinds of fun stuff. I think there's a hands-on design in there. So that's summer, number four. Number five is like one of my faves and that is a quilty bundle. So this is number five and that has the Lori Holt um, so something, so scrappy spools. And this is an upcoming quilt along on Fat Quarter Shops if anybody's interested in joining that. There's some more quilt patterns. There is a quilt book by Lori Holt in here, um, some foundation paper and a little double-sided cutting mat that the Fat Quarter Shops sent me. So super cute. This is the quilts bundle and that is number five. Let's see, number six is a Christmas themed bundle. So all kinds of fun um, Christmassy charts in here, including a duplicate. I forgot I bought two of this um, Prairie Schooler chart. You recognize that one as one of my whips right there in the center. So I have an extra one of those I shoved in there. So all kinds of fun charts in the Christmas bundle, which is number six. And then number seven is a winter bundle. So here is 
all the cute winter stuff. So yay. Number seven, winter. I think that's all the giveaways. So just as a reminder, you must be a subscriber to my channel, like the video, leave a comment with all of the numbers that you are interested in entering. And because I feel like the pillow might be the most popular one, I'll probably pull that one first because that will have, I think, the most people in it. And then I'll pull all the others. Um, <laughs> so yeah, just to wrap up, I think that's all I have to share with you guys today. I really hope it was a fun one. Sorry I didn't do it live, but... I'll do more live ones in the future when, you know, my mom is back in town. Um, I drove her and my dad to the airport yesterday. They are off to Dubai to visit my sister and brother-in-law and their kids. And I think they're spending almost three weeks there and they're going on lots of fun little resort adventures while they're there. I think they're going to be some camel riding and, um, you know, desert barbecue things. I don't know. And like a hotel with like a private pool on their balcony. They're like living the life for the next few weeks. So... <laughs> But, you know, um, once things have settled down here and uh, everybody is back to normal, maybe I'll have my helpers back for a little live video at some point soon. Thank you everyone who has been with me here for all 100 episodes or joined in the last year, the last month. Maybe this is your first video. Thank you for finding me and um, allowing me to share all of the crafty things that I do because it is... A big joy in life to get to make these videos and share them with you and hear feedback. I like the best comment, my favorite comment is when people are watching like maybe a tutorial and saying, oh my gosh, I learned something new or, and I've been sewing for 25 years and I'm, well, first off, that blows my mind that I can teach anyone new, anything new, but um, I love it. And I just love that, you know, people find what I make helpful or fun or entertaining. Um, I never thought at 37 when I started this channel that I would be a YouTuber. <laughs> oh my gosh, actually. Okay, this is so funny. So my sister, Allison, uh, she has the three boys. She texted me the other day that her oldest son, Charlie, who's seven, asked, he asked his mom, um, is Aunt Liz a YouTuber? <laughs> and she's like, well, she makes YouTube videos, but she also works full time. That's the YouTube isn't her job. It's, you know, she has a job. And he's like, oh, okay. Like, because in his mind, like little kids love YouTubers, you know, and he thought that was so cool that, you know, is Aunt Liz a YouTuber? <laughs> And I think at this point I consider consider myself a YouTuber because I publish regular videos and I do make money from doing it. You know, I let YouTube put ads on my videos and um, it really does help pay for this hobby because I like to buy a lot of craft supplies. <laughs> but no, it is not my full-time job. I just thought that was super, super cute of him to ask. Um, but yeah, I never envisioned uh, that I would start sharing YouTube videos. I've watched YouTube for like... 15 years. You know what I mean? Like I've watched all kinds of other YouTubers. I just never thought somebody would be interested in what I had to say. And it's, it's just been like a really, really fun thing to find this community several years ago. Um, you know, create my Instagram account, participate from that angle, and then start publishing videos that people want to watch. Like, I don't know. It's been a really, really good two and a half years. And Hopefully this goes for at least another two and a half years. I don't know. I don't have plans on stopping making my videos. So thank you all so much for coming back and watching me every week um, or every other week now. I know I had to reduce my schedule a little bit, but yeah, I really, really appreciate it. I love all of your kind words, comments. Thank you all. I think that's it. Otherwise, I'm just going to be rambling. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.